First of all, you must wash your hands using normal hand soap before you scrub to remove some of the dirt and bacteria that you may have picked up on the way to the operating room. You then dry your hands on surgical towels that have been laid out in preparation. Next, you take the surgical scrubbing sponge that has been pre-prepared in a packet with soap and open it whilst you still have dry hands. You then need to wet your hands using the motion that is shown, starting with wetting your fingers and moving in a sweeping motion to your elbows. We then need to take the scrubbing sponge and use the side with the bristles to clean under and around the fingernails, followed by scrubbing the rest of your hands and arms with the spongy side, starting at your hands and working towards your elbows. You must make sure that you apply enough pressure so that the sponge releases the suds. Rinse the soap of your hands using the same technique as earlier, starting at your fingertips and moving in a sweeping motion to your elbows, making sure your hands are always above your elbows. You should then use your elbow to turn off the tap. Place two fingers of your right hand on the inside of the left glove, as shown, and use it to lift the glove slightly so you can slip your left hand into it. Then take two fingers of your gloved hand and lift the other glove from the outside so that you are able to slip your right hand into it. This is an example of the simple interrupted suturing technique. For this we will need some tweezers, scissors and mosquito forceps. The mosquito forceps are held with the thumb and fourth finger in the loops and the index finger supporting the forceps at the top. The needle should enter and exit the skin or mucosa at a 90 degree angle and around 4 mm from the tissue margin. The needle is then pulled all the way through leaving a small tail end. The suture is looped around the mosquito forceps before knotting with the smaller end. This is repeated three or four times in opposite directions to achieve a flat and durable knot. And finally, the excess is cut using the scissors. This technique is used for larger blood vessels. We insert the needle through the vessel. We then do a normal knot as we would do with a normal suture. Then we loop the opposite ends of the suture around the vessel and we do another knot to make sure it's nice and tight. Then we do one more knot to ensure stability. Finally, we put all sharp objects into the yellow bin.